In this video, we shall look at this document, How to Install Yarbasic Under Windows. This document first explains how you can download and install Yarbasic on a Windows-based operating system. Then how to run Yarbasic programs under Windows. And finally, some tips when editing and running Yarbasic programs under Windows. We shall go through this document in detail in this video. First, how to obtain and install Yarbasic under Windows. Go to the official website, navigate to the Downloads page, and scroll to the section entitled Binaries for, for Windows. Then follow the instructions listed there. Note, if you encounter any problems with this, for example, if your internet service provider does not allow you to download this file, scroll down to the next section, zip file for Windows XP, and follow the instructions there, including double-clicking on the setup.exe file. This is a different installer, but exactly the same version of YAR Basic, and it works on all Windows versions, not just Windows XP. This zip file for Windows XP is also the easiest way to get hold of the YARBASIC executable file, yarbasic.exe, mentioned later in this video. If you receive this warning from Windows, click on More Info, then click on Run Anyway, and YAR Basic should install. You should then see this dialog box. Follow the instructions, and you will know that YAR Basic is installed correctly when you see this screen. Do try running the demo, which is very cool. Once you have installed YAR Basic, a shortcut called Docu will appear on your desktop, which takes you to the official manual. This is the file yarbasic.htm, which can be found in the yarbasic folder under Program Files. To get information on any command in yarbasic, for example print, just click on the corresponding letter of the alphabet from the list at the start of the file. For example, if you click on P, you will jump to a list of all commands beginning with that letter of the alphabet. In fact, it is perfectly possible to run yarbasic without installing it. For example, you may not have administrator rights on the PC you are using. Make sure the executable file, yarbasic.exe, which you can obtain from the zip file for Windows XP from the yarbasic website, is in the folder with your programs. Then, in Windows 11, for example, right-click on the folder, then click Open in Terminal. And this black terminal window should open up. Then type the command dot backslash yarbasic space file name and your program should run. Note that the name of your file can be anything at all. For example, it can be prog1.txt. It does not have to be have a dot yab file extension. Similarly, in Windows 10, Again, make sure that the executable file, yarbasic.exe, which you obtained from the zip file for Windows XP from the yarbasic website, is in the folder with your programs. Then enter command at cmd into the Windows Start menu. And in the command prompt that then opens up, use cd commands to move to the folder containing your programs. Then type the command yarbasic space file name and your program should run. Note that in Windows 10 there is no need for the dot backslash before the yarbasic command. Finally, there are quite a few online versions of yarbasic which are especially useful for Mac users although none of these online versions support graphics windows. 
Next, how to run your basic programs under Windows. In the next few slides, we shall read through exactly the following text while illustrating it with screenshots taken from Windows. Right click on the desktop and select New, then Folder, then rename it My YAR Basic Programs. Double click to open this folder, expand it to full screen, then right click in this folder and select New and YAR Basic Program, and then rename it, say, Prog1. Click on Prog1 to highlight it, then right click on it to edit it. If there is no edit prompt, you need to select Open With, then choose another app, then More Apps, and then select Notepad from the scrolling list. Do not tick the checkbox. Always use this app to open .yab files. Do not check this box. Uh, you'll not be able to execute the files by double-clicking anymore if you do this. For all subsequent times when you select Open With, you'll get Notepad as an option straight away. Type your program into Notepad. For example, this very simple Hello World program. To save your program, select Save from the File pull-down menu or use the Control s keyboard shortcut. Note, you do not have to close the Notepad window in order to run your program. In fact, it's a good idea to always leave the Notepad window open so you can immediately make any changes which you see you need to make from the results you get from running the program. Double click on the program to execute it, or you can right click on it and select option Execute. If your program ends normally, you will be prompted Program Done, Press Return, at which point you can just press Enter to close the black screen, which is also called the terminal screen. To terminate your program while it is running, press Ctrl and C together, and you'll get the same prompt, and then you press Enter. But you can always close the black screen terminal screen at any time by clicking the cross Windows button at the top right. This may generate a warning sometimes on some operating systems, but in fact, it never does any harm to close the program this way. So just click yes on any options which are offered. Um, the graphics window can be closed the same way. Tips when editing and running YAR basic programs under Windows. Again, we shall read through the following text while illustrating it with screenshots taken from Windows. In Notepad, go to the pull-down menu, Format, then select Font, then change to something much larger than the default, such as 18 point or 24 point for easier reading. Consolas font is probably the best choice, followed by Lucinda console. Your option will be saved for the next edit. While running a program, right-click at the top white bar of the black screen, then go to Properties and Font, and similarly change the font size to something larger for easier reading. Your option will be saved. While running a program, if you get an error, it will tell you the line number where the error occurred. This is extremely useful. Click on the Edit menu in Notepad and then select Go To and then you can enter the line number directly. This is particularly useful if your program is very long. As you can see from the example, uh, the error in this line is that we have the wrong quotes. We typed a single quote. It should have been double quotes. If the Go To option is greyed out, Go to Format and uncheck Word Wrap. When editing a YAR basic program in Notepad, try not to use the mouse so much, but rather use the built-in keyboard commands, which include Home, End, Page Up, Page Down, Tab, and combinations of Control and Shift buttons. You can find the 
home end page up and page down buttons just above the arrow keys on a normal keyboard. For example, home takes you to the start of a line, while control and home takes you to the start of the file. Similarly, end takes you to the end of a line, while control and end takes you to the end of the file. To illustrate the usefulness of these keyboard commands, try the following. Place the cursor in the middle of this print hello world line. Then press home to go to the start of the line. Then while holding down shift, press the down arrow one or more times to highlight lines of code. As you can see, the line print hello world has been highlighted in blue. You can then press control and insert or control and C to copy these lines and then shift and insert or control and V to paste them in one or more times. This is particularly useful when you're taking two copies of a line, reming one copy out, then modifying the other one. Now, when you've finished a batch of programs and you want to email them as an attachment to your instructor, don't forget to zip them up into a single compressed archive or zip file by right-clicking on the folder, then send to, then compressed zipped folder. This will give you two objects which look very similar, the same name, but the new one is the zip file. Okay, now that you know everything you need to know about typing and running your basic programs, let's make a start on part one of the crash course. Here's the program in the top panel, which you should type into Notepad. Now it recommends you call it PROG11A, so you should follow that recommendation. So here, 1.11 stands for section 1.1 and A means that it's the first program in that section. Note that line numbers are typed at the start of the line but everything else is tabbed in, uh, except for the REMs which are also not tabbed. Now work your way through the rest of the tasks, naming your programs prog11b, 11c, 12a, 12b, etc.